I wanted to give my initial thoughts and a quick review since I've had a few months to drive the new Defender around. I did get the plow mounted and that's all set to go. Um, there are numerous reviews online of the same model year and some of the issues that people have with them. They're small. Uh, the North Star has its own issues as well, but overall, I definitely like the machine so far. It'd be nice if the new doors did come with locks. Even the 2023s do not have locks on them for some reason. Um, as mentioned in some other videos, Can-Am does not install LED lights from the factory, which is also annoying, but easily remedied. You can install your own. I did do that in the back and in the front. They work really well. The, the little tuck away LED lights that I put in the reflector holes in the back work incredibly well. And I think they'll be ideal for plowing. So you can see how I tuck those in there. As I mentioned before, I did install some heavier springs just because the suspension from the factory is very, very soft. And that's, that's fine if you're not going to be hauling a lot of weight or putting a heavier plow on it. But I did put on this, the plow is on the Polaris. And it's, as I mentioned before, 400 pounds. So the heavier springs make a big, big difference in terms of body roll and just managing the weight. Now putting on the new plow wasn't hard. I had a certified boss installer do it. Um, the harness wasn't too bad. Putting on the hardware is pretty easy. They finally have an updated bracket that will fit with the large brush guard that comes on these new defenders. I could have taken that off. But as you see, there is very little room between the brush guard and the plow tower when you actually attach this. So I did have to adjust the bracket down here. There's multiple adjustments for it, three different adjustments. The only thing with that is as you move the plow forward on the frame, it pushes it out further as well. And that itself will impact the angle of the plow. So as it comes out, it raises it up in order to give you a little bit more clearance. When we first installed it, it actually hit the brush guard when you try to bring up the tower and it would not release these pins down here in order to lock it in. So I had to go as far out as I could this way which also brings the plow up, which will give you a little bit more clearance, but then it can and does impact kind of the pitch of the plow itself. So if you're too far, angle too far down, the plow is going to dig into the driveway and it doesn't push as easily when you have that sharper angle. So there are adjustments on the plow, which I had to fiddle with a little bit um, in order to take the pitch of the plow as it was on the Ranger. It was nose down a little bit because the Ranger set a little bit lower. And as I kicked out that bottom part on the pile, the, the adjustment, the manual adjustment, it brought it the bottom out a little bit more. So it's more of a pushing rather than a digging. And that does make a big difference. The new Defenders have 30 inch tires on them. The 22 and a half, which this is, has 27 inch. So as you get taller and you have more, as the front end's raised up a little bit more off the ground, it's going to impact how sharp the angle is with the plow. Depends on what plow you get. I'm sure the brackets will accommodate it, but that's just something to really think about. Just as I did on the Ranger, I put in 300 pounds of ballast in the back. The uh, five sandbags, which definitely makes a difference just to keep a little bit the rear end from coming up as much. 
doesn't spin. I never had any issues with it anyway. I always plow in four wheel drive and low. It's gonna be no different with the Defender. I mounted the uh, controller for the plow. You can see right next to the steering wheel. It's out of the way. Just put it in the cup holder, I'm not using it. I do admit that it's gonna be nice to have a heated cab for the first time. I was driving it around today. It's 34 degrees here and I had it set at 73, which is nice and toasty. There was some rattling in the cab. I did take it on the trail um, probably for a few hours. I was able to go at a pretty quick clip and this by no means is a great trail rig. You can take it on the trails and be fine, but having the heavier springs, it made for a stiffer ride, which I knew would be the case. I really didn't care much about it, but it definitely stiffens it up. Um, it helps with the nose dive and the body roll, which is a, a big deal because it's, as I said before, it's really, really soft from the factory. I was able to adjust the doors. There was some rattling in the doors. So the small little pin here does slide back and forth. Now they tighten this thing down extremely tight. It was so tight it started to flex the bracket that it was on when I was trying to loosen it. I was able to get it off carefully with the impact gun, slide it in a little bit, and it makes for a tighter fit. So the doors don't rattle nearly as much. I also fabricated a quick aftermarket cable for the door catch. The one that comes with it is eight inches. This one I made myself with some heat shrink and some aircraft cable and made it nine inches. And it, it allows for the door to open quite a bit more. Um, the eight inch cable really was kind of cumbersome and would get in the way uh, in terms of when you're trying to open up that door, it would catch it catch pretty early and it didn't leave a whole lot of room to get in and out of it. So small complaint, easily remedied, no big deal. The lights up front, I put on the brush guard, as you can see, it's not perfect. It, it does fine when the plow's down, those LED lights make a tremendous difference. I was not willing to put a big light bar up on, a, on the roof of a fully enclosed cab. I'm not gonna risk a warranty issue. I know there's aftermarket brackets. I know there's brackets that fit on top of it and don't go through the roof. But for now, I think this will be fine. I'll see what it's like pushing snow this winter. But the backup lights or the rear LED lights that I can control on the toggle switch, I think is gonna be a tremendous, tremendous benefit. Trying to push snow in the dark and back up. Anyone who's done it knows that that's a, a big challenge at times. But outside of that, those few small things, I think the plow, it carries away the plow nicely. You can see right now, you know, with the plow on, it's obviously not up, but it does carry it pretty well. Start it up quickly and raise the plow up. So that's 400 pounds on the front. With the stock springs, it was nose diving noticeably, but with this, just a little bit, still some give to it. But once I have our first snow, I'll put a, uh, I'll mount a camera on it. I finally bought a GoPro to get a couple different angles once we start pushing snow this winter. And we'll see how it does. Hopefully I have as good a luck with this as I did with the uh, Polaris. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, I'll try to answer them as best I can. Thanks.